almost by feel the edge of the aluminium of the blade. So it looks like you're nearly done there. Finished? Not quite, mate. Well, thanks for the tea. Okay. Beat. What? I'll put it down. Right, I've got my sticky black plastic is on and it's all cut out ready for the instruments and I've got a diagram here in the manual. I'm starting with the airspeed indicator, which is here, the ASI, airspeed indicator. Now what a lot of people do mistakenly is mount it from the front and it looks exceedingly ugly that way around because that's not how it's designed to go. It should go in from the back like that and then it looks lovely and just four bolts to fix it in place. Okay. And then, when that's all tightened up, just keep working from the diagram. The next one will be the dual taco, then the altimeter, oil pressure, oil temperature, manifold pressure, and water temperature. Last two bits to go in are the transponder and the radio. Now, this will slot in, but you can see at the back it's held in place by this little screw, which is activated by this little Allen key in there. So that goes into its mounting tray. So that's done. And then the lovely radio, which should just slot in like so. And it's just got a couple of retaining clips. Now, are you ready for this? Ta-da! Now, what we've got here is the sender unit, which will go inside one of the fuel tanks, but this needs calibrating relative to the gauge down here. So it said the first line was mount the gauge in a convenient place, so there it is. Then you connect up the battery to it. In this manometer tube, see I remember that from physics, it's empty, there's no fuel in it at the moment, and on the top of here are two screws. One says full, one says empty. I have to turn them both fully clockwise, like that. One. Oh, look at that, it's moved, it's over here now. Now I have to move the empty one anti clockwise until the needle is on the E. Oh, gosh, it's very sensitive. So now, for the dangerous bit, you get the fuel. And you fill this with fuel. Oops. Right, now. Right, so that's way off the end there now. So now I turn my full one back until it says on the game. So the big test now. If the fuel was being drained, the equivalent in this little physics setup is to pull the sender out. So as I pull it out, the needle should drop. And it is. And when the sender's about half in, half out, it should be on half, which it is. And then keep going. Oh, there you go. Red light comes on, warns you that you're running out of fuel, rapido. And then, when it's completely out, it's on empty. Perfect. Pete, though, it's quite a big bit of kit to put in the cockpit, don't you think? Yeah, look, it's only that bit's going to go in, though, isn't there? We don't need oh, all we don't, of that. Oh, we don't need to put no, all no, the wood just, in? Just that bit, that'll be fine. Oh, thank goodness you're here, mate. The last gauge to go in the pod is the hour meter, which gets switched on and starts timing as soon as the instruments are switched on. And it's very important because it allows you to work out when you've got to service the aircraft and so on. The pod's moved on a little bit. We've already got these gauges in here. A full range taco, which is going to back up to the one that's on the main instrument panel. Voltmeter, fuel pressure, and this temperature gauge is a temperature recorder for a sensor that's on the secondary drive bearing. So these are very important instruments. But this one's going to go in here like that, and it's a very simple job.
Right, last job on the bench is to put on the GPS mounting bracket. It's just got four bolts and it bolts through the top of the pod here. So it's in good view of the pilot. So there is the baby. This will fit in here, but we need to put in wires first. Drops in like that. Oh, look at that. Lovely jubbly. Right, let's see if we can get something on it. Ah, good job, mate. Nice one. Huh. Rocking. He is it's, good though, uh, isn't he, eh? Pete there. It's amazing you don't see him on a main channel. Right, I can drop the pod back onto the airframe. Just rest it down there because the collective lever has got to come up and through this slot. So, drop there and there. It sits on these adjusters, there's four of them across the front, so we'll sort that out when we actually put the rest of the bodywork on because this is fixed to the bodywork, not the airframe. But hey, Starting to look like a helicopter at the frontier. Now, next job is to put in the main instrument panel. And then the instrument panel will go in there, together with a huge amount of wiring. If this looks complicated, it's because it is quite a jumble. A little bit of jiggling. Oh, there we go. It will slot in and then it'll take up the shape of the panel when all the screws are in place. Just looks fantastic. Now to wire up the instrument panel, so wish me luck. The diagram is actually very useful, but you do need to kind of follow it extremely carefully. I'm gonna wire up first these instruments here. Now on the wiring diagram, they are down here. It's slightly confusing because these actually are in the order you'd see them from the front, but actually the numbers here refer to the terminals on the back. So let's start, we know up here that all the numbers four are red, are positives, the fives are black, are grounds or earths. Okay, so we'll start with this one here, which is the fuel pressure. The one on the left is positive at the top there. So that's that. And the one on the right is a negative. Right, so that's got its power supplies. Now, full range taco, we've then got terminals 2 and terminal 7. So if we follow terminal 2 round, up there, there, so I need wire 15 onto terminal 2. That is wire 15, so that needs to go onto the top terminal. Yeah. This is the wiring harness for the engine management system, which is the next bit to go in, and it fits down in here like this. These big plugs go onto the electronic control unit. I'm just going to clip the harness for the wiring loom in place there, so it hangs in roughly the right position. Then I've got to work out, with reference to my wiring diagram, where all the other plugs go and then lay them out into the right places before connecting them. And all these plugs go to things like injectors, map sensor, primary air temperature, because all these things have a primary and a secondary backup circuit. have got injector 3 and injector 4. That's injector 3 on the top. That's the other one. Right, next ones are secondary injectors, which are under here. Next is the primary air temperature. And secondary is on there. 
Next, the throttle position sensors. This is the throttle, but it's sensed.